midnight 30. Good evening and welcome to our English news edition. Coming to you from Canal Algérie to the headlines. The Prime Minister Ayman bin Abdurrahman responds to the deputies of the National People's Assembly's inquiries on the government's general policy statement and assures the support for participatory democracy. The chairman of the Presidential Leadership Council of the Brotherly Country Yemen confirms his participation in the upcoming Arab Summit in Algiers and from Beirut to Tunis. The aspirations and hopes of the Arab elites to unify the Arab ranks captured through the mics and cameras of the Algerian television. The Sonatra Group and the Spanish energy group Naturgy signed an agreement on the sale and purchase contracts of natural gas and agreed to review the prices of the long-term gas supply contracts. The Mahzen regime on human practices reached a new level. Moroccan security forces attacked the visually impaired protesters, asking for their integration in the public services. Good evening. Those were today's headlines. First in our news, the Prime Minister Ayman bin Abdurrahman praised the honesty that characterized the four days discussion, which reflects the crucial role of the National People's Assembly to restore the trust of the citizen and his participation in participatory political work to achieve the desired development. The Premier recalled the data and indicators related to the outcome of achievement and activities in various political, economic and social sectors as an embodiment of the reforms approved by the president of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun, and initiated by the executive branch since the approval of its work plan for the month of September 2021. The prime minister revealed the embodiment of 40 of the 54 pledges of the president. <laughs> What we achieved in a year is not to be overlooked due to the prevailing situations, namely the difficult health and economic situation, accumulations, a resistance to change and outdated mindset that cannot keep up with the new approaches. All these circumstances made our mission more difficult. However, all these factors provided incentives that enabled us to move forward towards implementing the commitment of the President of the Republic and driving Algeria from economic dependence and accessing a path of development that depends on all economic sectors to create the desired change. The Prime Minister emphasizes that the periodic meetings between the government and the National People's Assembly's deputies is to lay the foundations for participatory democracy. <laughs> I started with a major concern of the representatives concerning democracy and this by enabling them to exercise their regulatory authority by announcing a meeting between the Prime Minister and heads of parliamentary blocs at least twice a year, meetings that will allow us to debate and exchange views on various issues. I'm also announcing as part of implementing the President of the Republic's commitment related to establishing the foundations of a participatory approach to the commitments of ministers by answering questions of deputies within the statutory timelines. Moreover, governors are also obligated to hold one meeting at least once every two months. In another statement, the Premier added that 42 of 54 of the President of the Republic's commitments were already achieved. Let's listen. They started to see the result of their efforts after achieving more than 80% of what was initially planned, or the equivalent of 42 out of 54 of the President of the Republic's commitments, including the revision of the Constitution, the reformulation of the electoral law framework, a comprehensive state reform with all its branches and the Republic's institutions, strengthening good governance to ensure its independence and modernization, building a free and active civil society, implementing a work plan for the youth, confirming and strengthening the components of national identity, cleansing the economic and commercial sphere, as well as implementing a coherent trade policy open to the international economy. The National People's Assembly has discussed and enriched the government's general policy for four days, especially when it comes to the social aspect.
In his capacity as a special envoy of the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun, the Minister of Communication, Mohammed Wuslimani, was received by the Chairman of Presidential Leadership Council for Yemen, Rashad Mohammed Al Alimi, to whom he handed the letter of invitation by the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun, to take part in the proceedings of the 31st Ordinary Session of the Council of the Arab League that will be hosted by Algeria 1st and 2nd of November. For his part, the Chairman of Presidential Leadership Leadership Council of Yemen has affirmed that he will participate personally in the upcoming Arab summit that will take place in the country of martyrs in an Arab and international context marked, marked by multidimensional issues and challenges. From Beirut to Tunis, let's see how the Tunisian media is preparing to cover the Arab summit scheduled in Algiers the next November 1st and 2nd. Aware of the challenges, the Arab world hoped to rely on strong and audible Arab media. Report by Linda Akaraj, commentary by Rani Al-Bahri. With the approach of the Arab summit, which will take place in Algiers on November 1st and 2nd, the Tunisian press and media attaches great importance to it and follow all the details of the preparations of this long-awaited event. We follow the preparations for the Arab summit daily to prepare articles and highlight the efforts made by Algeria. The coverage of the preparations of this event continues through our correspondence on site. The summit takes place in a particular security and social political context experienced by Maghreb and Arab regions and the whole world. Aware of the noble mission assigned to them and the role of the media in mobilizing public opinion, Tunisian journalists met present that this summit will take place at a crucial moment. The summit will strengthen Arab cooperation. The next Arab summit will give an important place to the Palestinian cause, especially after the escalation of violence that the occupied territories has experienced since 2019. This is another opportunity to unite the Arab ranks and find solutions to common causes. We know that Algeria is a country of consensus and that the Algerian people are also appreciated and loved by the whole region. We hope that this summit in Algiers will be a prelude for a common Arab work. The comeback of Algerian diplomacy in its historic role in the settlement of Arab continental and even international crises and the positions of Algiers which support a common Arab vision. The Tunisian press advocates for a successful Arab summit in Algiers. Still with the preparations of the Arab summit, I suggest you listen to this statement made by Riyad Sidawi, the director of the Geneva Arab Center for Political and Social Research and Analysis. C'est le sommet de l'espoir arabe. Il faut savoir que les Arabes ont traversé le désert, si vous voulez. The summit is a summit of Arab hope. You should know that the Arabs have crossed the desert, especially from 2011. Today, Algeria will slow down decadence and will give hope to all Arabs. Algeria has its symbolic weight, especially the heritage of November the 1st. The timing is well chosen. November the 1st means a human revolution that faced the French colonizer and half a million of French soldiers and officers. When you say Algeria, it reminds you of Didouche Mourad, Amirouch, and Mustafa bin Boulaid. All these and more are heroes who fought the French colonizer. The Arabs have high expectations from Algeria. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and the National Community, Ibrahim Tal Amamra, received on Thursday the chairman and members of the Saudi Arabia Algeria Parliamentary Friendship Group at the Saudi Shura Council as part of their visit to Algeria at the invitation of the Council of the Nation. The meeting was an opportunity to display the brotherly and cooperation relations between the two brotherly countries.
In cooperation, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the National Community Abroad, Rantan Lamamra, and the Ugandan Minister of State for Foreign Affairs in charge of the regional cooperation, John Mulimba, signed two bilateral agreements to strengthen cooperation between the two countries. The cooperation in the energy sector was the center of the talks that gathered the Minister of Energy and the Mines, Mohammed Arqab, and members of the Saudi Arabia Algeria Parliamentary Friendship Group at the Saudi Shura Council. The Sonatra Group and the Spanish Energy Group Naturgy signed Thursday in Algiers an agreement on the sale and purchase contracts of natural gas that linked the two companies through the Medgas pipeline. The two parties agreed to review the prices of the long-term gas supply contracts and this amid the current development of the market to ensure the balance of contracts in, in force on the basis of mutual profit. Pursuant to the provisions of Article 11 of the Code of Criminal Procedure, the public prosecutor to the Court of Sidi Mohammed for the Department of Combating Terrorism and Organized Crime across the homeland informs the public op opinion that in the face of the growing phenomenon of illegal speculation in goods, especially some basic items with wide consumption and unjustified price hikes in a manner that affects the purchasing power of the citizen in light of the continuous efforts of the state to provide these materials, these criminal acts are considered a blow to the national economy and a deliberate organized crime that requires addressing it with the authority and strictness of the law. In this context, in a view of the seriousness of these incidents committed during the same period of time in different regions across the country and the existence of strong evidence of their destructive nature that affects the national economy and the circumstances that these acts were committed in within groups of transnational organized crime, the above-mentioned prosecutor's office of the Republic has requested these cases from the local prosecutors of the Republic Public in order to deal with them judicially at the level of this specialized section. The prosecution will also file petitions to impose severe penalties against all persons involved in these cases in accordance with the law. Within the framework of the fight against terrorism, thanks to the optimal utilization of information, the security services of the Ministry of National Defense in Burj Beji Mukhtar in the 6th military region have been able to arrest three terrorists who were active in the Sahel region. And this concerns Al Arbi Ladmi Mohammed, also called Talha, and Lansari Abdullah, also called Usama, and Al Arbi Ladmi Ali, also called Suhaib. During this operation, a support element was also arrested and this concerns the so-called Wildbakay Sidi Ahmed, also called Zaza. In addition to the seizure of two utility vehicles, this operation comes to confirm once again the determination and vigilance of the National People's Army Forces to track down these criminals across the entire, na entire national territory, cutting off all forms of support for terrorist groups. In the Sahrawi file, the loyal Victoria Wakefield assured to the British Supreme Court during a hearing held on Wednesday that the agreement concluded between the United Kingdom and Morocco that includes products from the occupied Western Sahara needed the approval of the Sahrawi people, indicating that this is an important condition that was not met. The lawyer that represents the British NGO stated that there is no basis under international law that enables Morocco to control and trade in Western Sahara and resources without getting the approval that constitutes a legal basis. Still on the international level, the brutality of the Mahzen regime reaches new levels. In a heartless motion, the Moroccan security forces attacked the visually impaired protesters who were asking for their integration in the public services after being patient for more than 10 years. Images that shocked the Moroccan public opinion would show the Moroccan police beating the blind people asking for their rights. More details with Najah Tayyar. <laughs> The 
These are unbearable images, violence that is unheard of towards innocent blind people, the victims who did nothing but suffer the injustice of the government. With no other choice, they have to go out to the street and claim their most basic rights. Their disability did not discourage them from pursuing higher education and obtaining diplomas, but the Mahzan regime refuses their integration into the public service. <laughs> We are manifesting given the public authorities act towards our brothers, the visually impaired, who are disbarred since 2011 because of a certificate. Many have diplomas or telephone distribution certificate or baccalaureate, but the government refused to make a solution for them. Still, they take the streets for their rights. These blind men and women who are suffering the disregard of the government for more than 10 years could not sustain anymore. And now for claiming their rights, they got nothing but kicking, punching or even hit with the truncheons. The inhuman act of the Moroccan police that they could not see but felt it on their weak bodies. To be silenced, to not shout their distress loud and clear. <laughs> We have been demanding our rights since 2011. We asked the government to settle our situation, but they never answered the demands for our rights. In Morocco, anger and indignation continue to increase. This fringe of society has always been marginalized and despised. Despite the many broken promises of the Mahzan, all they claim is to be treated as humans and be given their human rights. In occupied Palestine, a young man fell murder and three others were injured, including two journalists that were shot by the occupation forces in the city of Nablus in the northern West Bank. The occupation forces also targeted a group of journalists in Nablus government in the Ram Allah city. Dozens of settlers stormed the courtyards of the Holy Aqsa Mosque with high protection from the occupation forces. And with that, our news edition comes to a close. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.